In this video we are going to talk about 8 dividend stocks to buy and hold forever. So before starting this video, please like this video and subscribe to this channel for our future updates. Since forever is a very long time, selecting stocks to buy and keep for the rest of one's life is a challenging process that should always be done with caution. Where should investors seek for businesses that are able to consistently generate satisfactory financial performance year after year? Investing in stocks that have been around for a while can be beneficial, particularly if those stocks happen to be market leaders in healthy industries that are forecasted to continue growing for decades. The reality is that investing is difficult, and even financial experts have difficulty consistently building a portfolio of top stocks to buy that outperform the market. After fees are eliminated, only around 15% of actively managed funds outperform the index over an extended period of time, according to the s and Amp Wink with tongue sticking out 500. Number 8. Brookfield Asset Management, BAM. Brookfield Asset Management, BAM, is a financial services firm based in Canada that you may not be aware of. The following is a description of an asset management firm that specializes in the management of the real estate, infrastructure, and renewable energy assets. The company's roots may be traced back over a century when it was a pioneer in the building and operation of critical infrastructure in Brazil. They've evolved into a global asset manager with more than $500 billion in assets under management during the last two decades. They hold a diverse portfolio of properties that span five continents and a variety of industries, including gas pipelines, toll motorways, data centers, solar farms, hydroelectric dams, and skyscrapers. Brookfield Renewable Partners, BEP, Brookfield Infrastructure Partners, BIP, and Brookfield Business Partners, BBU, make money in three ways like a private equity firm. To begin with, they invested their own funds in a variety of real estate holdings. Second, they raise money from institutional investors, invested on their behalf in a variety of real estate assets, and then collect performance fees. They founded and control major shares in publicly traded partnerships, from which they receive cash distributions, management fees, and performance fees, collectively known as incentive distribution rights. Number 7. Enbridge Incorporated, ENB. They manage a large pipeline network that transports oil and natural gas from where it is collected to where it is needed in order to keep Canada and the United States powered and warm. Despite a few incidents, pipelines are a safer and more cost-effective means of transporting energy than the dominant alternative, which is the train freight car. Enbridge's principal source of revenue is energy transportation, hence it has little direct exposure to commodity prices. Long periods of low energy prices, on the other hand, may diminish oil and gas production volumes, leading in fewer volumes and lower profits for oil and gas transporters like Enbridge. Enbridge's large natural gas exposure, in addition to their oil exposure, is one of the features of the company that we respect the most. Electric vehicles may pose a long-term threat to oil quantities, and it is difficult to predict how long this will take, but natural gas is projected to remain a significant source of energy for decades to come. Despite the fact that renewable energy is likely to account for a growing number of new energy projects, natural gas is expected to eat into coal's market share in the near future. When compared to coal, natural gas emits substantially less carbon dioxide and creates significantly lower levels of hazardous pollutants like mercury. Aside from that, Enbridge owns a small portfolio of renewable energy assets that it plans to grow over time. In recent years, the corporation has conducted a series of acquisitions and consolidations in order to streamline its business approach. To be more exact, they bought Spectra Energy, which increased their natural gas exposure significantly, and then bought out additional master limited partnerships in which they had major stakes, putting everything under the parent company's management. Number 6. Alphabet. Alphabet presently has the largest financial sheet of any company in the world, with over $132 billion in cash equivalents and only $14 billion in debt. Apart from the Google website and YouTube, Alphabet is responsible for a variety of additional platforms, including Android, Google AdSense for other websites, Google Maps, Google Cloud, and so on. Google's parent business is Alphabet. They also have some of the most cutting-edge equipment in autonomous technology and are among the top quantum computation researchers. Number 5. HDFC Bank, HDB. The largest private bank in India is HDFC Bank, which is headquartered in Mumbai. 
It has over 5,000 stores and a booming internet firm across India, and it is celebrating its 25th anniversary since its start in 1994. Despite the fact that India's per capita GDP remains low, the country is on track to overtake China as the world's most populated country, but rising. It is not only a significant emerging market, but it also has one of the fastest GDP growth rates in the world, and it is predicted to overtake the United States as the world's largest economy by the 2030s. In addition to the regular risks that come with running a bank, HDFC Bank stock faces two major threats. To begin with, it is expensive, with a current blended price-to-earnings ratio of above 30. The business's PG ratio, which was established by Peter Lynch and compares the valuation of a company to its growth rate, is fairly advantageous for investors as a result of its earnings growth of roughly 20% per year. Second, because India is heavily reliant on oil imports, whenever oil prices rise, the country's trade deficit widens, lowering the currency's value. Number 4. Itochu Corporation, Itochu. Japan is home to a number of major trading corporations that engage in a variety of operations such as commodity sourcing, logistics, and the operation of multiple businesses. One of the most successful of these companies, for example, is Itochu Corporation. It is accessible for purchase on the OTC market as an ADR under the ticker ITC or on the Tokyo Stock Exchange for investors in the United States. Number 3. JD.com, JD. Some consider JD to be one of China's Amazons, which is a reasonable assessment. They're a major e-commerce company that's spent the previous decade building a massive logistical infrastructure across China in order to give clients fast delivery. Unlike Alibaba, JD has complete control over the vast majority of its sales, which reduces margins but gives them more control over product quality and safety. Its revenue growth has continued to spread like wildfire, and its valuation has dropped dramatically since the start of the year. The purple line in the chart represents quarterly revenue, while the orange line represents the price-slash-sales ratio. Number 2. Discover Financial Services, DFS. Discover Financial Services, which was spun out from Morgan Stanley in 2007, now runs a lean online bank as well as two major payment networks. The company also controls the Discover brand, which is one of the four major credit card networks in the United States, in addition to Visa, MasterCard, and American Express. Discover has evolved into an online bank with a diverse range of products and services, including checking accounts, savings accounts, personal loans, student loans, and home equity loans to those with excellent credit scores since its beginning a decade ago. They also own the Pulse Payment Network, an interbank electronic payments transfer network, and Diners Club International, both of which are listed on the New York Stock Exchange, a charge card brand. Discover is well known in the United States, although it is not nearly as extensively accepted abroad as Visa, MasterCard, and American Express. For obvious reasons, this is a drawback, but it also represents a potential source of future growth for the company if they can expand internationally in the same way that the other three main card networks have. Number 1. Amgen. Amgen has been in business since the early 1980s and has introduced a wide variety of groundbreaking treatments since the company's founding. Existing treatments for a variety of ailments can always be improved upon, and patients' access to pharmaceuticals that can save their lives is of the utmost importance. In addition, there are still a significant number of diseases for which there are no treatments that have been licensed. These are some of the most important reasons why healthcare organizations will continue to enjoy healthy revenue and profits in the years to come. In addition to this, the global population is getting older. By the year 2050, the number of persons aged 60 and older is expected to have roughly doubled, as reported by the World Health Organization. As people get older, they spend more money on prescription medications, which means that in the next 10 years, pharmaceutical companies like Amgen will have access to an even larger market. Evenergy's sales came in at $170 million, which is 59% higher than they were during the same time period a year earlier. Sales of Prolia increased by 12% year-over-year to $852 million in the first quarter. In the meantime, Repetha's annual revenue reached $329 million, representing an increase of 15% year-over-year. Tespire and Lumacras are two of the more recent additions to Amgen's product catalog. What do you think of our video? 
Let me know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video and want to hear from me again, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go. Thanks for watching.